transition gone as smoothly as you thought it would be? Yeah, it has. Uh, you know, last time we coached together was in Tampa. And, um, but I've known him for quite a while, or since that time, always had great respect for him. Um, I think that this, you know, with him running the offense now, in charge of the offense, has brought us even closer together philosophically. So it's been good. Brendan Williams obviously had been out of football because of his microfracture and stuff like that. What are you seeing out of him as he tries to get back? Yeah, you know what? I, you know, just in conversation with him, he's gaining confidence as it goes on. It's hard to evaluate. Just he doesn't get a lot of reps in there. But uh, big body type guy, um, fitting more um, the height, weight, and the frame. You know, body mass that we're looking for at that position. So. You know, we'll see as he gets more and more comfortable with his reps. Was the feeling that he's still 24, so medically he can probably withstand maybe a little bit more than an older guy? Yeah, I don't. I know when we went and visited him, we really liked him, and then he came out, and uh, we just felt like we had an opportunity to get him back. What was your thinking when you claiming the quarterback? Were you involved in that? Or? Yeah, yeah. I think it was an opportunity to get a guy in here who had some experience, and uh, you know, he started for our games. He he'd been two years in the league. Um, you know, smart, uh, picks things up pretty quick, has uh, good poise, and just felt like, you know, to have that, that guy that came in with a little bit more experience. Um, Bill O'Brien was saying yesterday in Houston that none of his rookies are, any, are in any kind of good physical shape. Uh, how, about your, how about your guys? Well, I, I think they're getting in shape, <laughs> you know. Uh, so there's some truth to that. It's well, I just, I think, I think the frustration probably, I don't want to speak for everybody, is that, you know, how do these guys come in? You know, I think it's sometimes as a coach, you, you don't want to give in to the standard. Hey, they come in from, they're traveling, and they're going to all these places. They go through the draft. Now they come into rookie minicamp. Well, we're not going to lower our standard. they got to come in ready to go. And then maybe you see some injuries and, you know, then you look back and you say, well, they are traveling a lot, and there's a battle. Do you give in a little bit and maybe go 75%, not do rookie mini camp, give in to the fact that they could be traveling and not quite in shape, or do you maintain the standard? I think that's the battle everybody's going through, I, I, I'm guessing. Are you rethinking? What's that? Are you rethinking? Yeah, we're, we're evaluating it, um, you know, just because of two years, you know, some guys with hamstrings and things like that. Uh, the Dante injury, that, you know, it's unfortunate. Uh, but I think when you look at it and say, because what, what happens is rookie minicamp, they may come out of it, and then you start your phase two again, or get into OTAs, and then hamstrings pop up from the rookies, and they say, well, it might be all the way back from rookie minicamp. It's not from today's practice. It could be because they were challenged, you know, for two days in a row. So, I, I don't know, you, you, you're just trying to find answers, but yeah, I, we're evaluating. We're always evaluating our practices and see what's the best way, you know, with these guys and how they come in. Some teams are now moving the rookie minicamp to two weeks after the draft. Have you, thought we, that? you have that ability to do that. Uh -huh. um, you know, there's a, there's a good thing, that, that's good. It gives you a chance to get them in phase two. The downside of it is, is that usually after, in the first week, the, the guys that are trying out, you get a good, pick of the guys to come in and do the tryout. If you wait the second week, they've already been at some teams the first week. So the numbers dwindle as far as who you get the second week. So it's mixed as far as competitive guys. And you know we signed some of those tryout guys. So I think that's what we weigh back and forth. Um, talking to a couple of guys who played for Greg Olson in the past, they say if you can't, as running backs, if you can't pass protect, you're not going to play. Sure. Can't really practice that out here, can you? Well, no, you can because uh, some of the pressures. We, uh, we're, I think we're learning as a team how to run pressures in OTAs and give guys a look for the pressure, but also not be out of control. Mm -hmm. And almost looks better than sometimes our four-man rush. Right. You know, the guys understand it, so uh, they're doing a good job. In two minutes, there was a couple situations we brought it. Saw Toby Gerhardt come all the way across the formation, mm -hmm. you know, block. So I think they're understanding it, but more is asked of them. Gus, how do you like the offensive tackle depth that you have behind Joe Cohen? It's, it's good. Um, I like Wells. I think Wells has come along. Um, also, uh, the guy that's been doing pretty well at guard for the change he's made is Austin Pastor. I think he, he's doing, done a really nice job. He's caught our attention. Here he played right tackle. Now he's moving in at guard, and he's doing some good things. You know, it could be down the line where he could maybe be a swing guy, you know, play guard and tackle, uh, you know, until we get the pads on, we'll see. But that could be a possibility. So I think that adds even more depth for us, that tackle.
Yes, what have you seen from Telvin Smith from year one to year two that he's improved upon? Yeah, I think he's got really good poise. He's, what, 220 pounds now. So he's put on some weight. Uh, he looks good now out of the practice. He's playing fast. Um, Moore's put on his plate, and uh, he's just taking it all in, and it's not slowing him down at all. So I thought today he had an excellent practice. He's playing with a sense of freedom, you know, where he, he knows what's asked of him. Uh, and in the second year, that's difficult. But uh, I really like where he's at right now. 220. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Got to be optimistic. Man. Wait, a couple more guys. Could you uh, uh, anticipate having three quarterbacks in 53, or would you like just two and then one on the practice squad? Um, we haven't talked much about that. It could be, you know, we've had two and one on the practice squad, so we'll see how that turns out. I think that would be more the possibility, two and one on the practice squad. And this but guy can still his practice squad time? I believe he does, yes. Greg said that, you know, today you had the two-minute no huddle. You've been able to add everything offensively that you wanted so far and young guys including Blake if they yeah we're not we're not fully we don't have all of our installs in yet so uh, they've had it in phase one and phase two but not on the field work so today was the first day for that so I think they picked it up pretty well I know talking to Nathaniel Hackett you know with Blake he said you know yesterday in his conversation with them Blake was talking about you know what it's starting to come I'm really starting to get a handle. So what's that? Practice OTA number, what, six, number five? So, you know, where he's starting to feel comfortable, but we're not completely done with the install yet, you know, on the field. So there's eight of them. Yep. How's Morris look? Um, I think with Steven, uh, the decision-making and things like that, I think he needs to, you know, that's the challenge uh, that he's gotten placed in front of him. So I think he's doing solid. I mean, and you know, for me, if I say solid, that's not, you know, great. But um, I think, you know, we just want to challenge them. We want to challenge them more.